Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so this morning I thought it might be fun to sort of collate all the different Bible versions and see what they say in regards to Revelation 20. Uh, I might get more specific and just focus on verse 4, but uh, to me it's a little interesting. And uh, so let's take a look. Of course, um, you know, um, I've been over Revelation 20 uh, a couple of times, and it's quite clear that there is no thousand-year reign. Okay, so that's the first red flag. Anytime somebody says the phrase or the term or, or whatever, the thousand-year reign, that's not in the Bible anywhere. It's astonishing to me that um, people only say that because they heard a false teacher say it and they just assume that it's in the Bible and it's not. And I could show you, look, it's not there, but it's it's not there. It would be easier to show you, hey, it's there, if it was there, but I can't show you because it's not there. Does that make sense? So in verse 4, we see that um, they lived and reigned with Christ, right? It doesn't say they reigned for a thousand years. It doesn't say Christ reigned a thousand years. It says they lived and reigned with Christ. That's a huge difference. And same thing also in verse 6. They shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him. It doesn't say they reign a thousand years. It doesn't say Christ reigns a thousand years. It says they reign with Christ a thousand years. All right, and so this is the unique time period that we're in right now. Very unique time period from the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ to the time of his return. It's a very unique time period. I don't know how you miss it. It, and the Bible is quite clear. Jesus reigns forever. He doesn't reign a thousand years. And not only that, what are you putting your hope into? Are you putting your hope into a bonus thousand years? I'm not. A thousand years of what? <laughs> of peace? It, that, is that what you want? A thousand years of peace and then at the end of the thousand years it's all destroyed. Is that... I mean, get your stuff straight. It's ridiculous. It really is. It's ridiculous. A thousand years of peace, and then all of a sudden, boom, it's all gone. <laughs> what in the world is wrong with people? I'm putting my hope into eternal life. What are you putting your hope into? A bonus thousand years? Where everything is going to be perfect and sinless, and then God's going to destroy what? Why? What in the world? None of that is supported in the scripture at all. Okay, and, and then <laughs> I got to point this out. I can't, I can't not point this out. At the end of a thousand years, if in your scenario, you have Jesus on the earth, in Jerusalem, and you're with him on the earth, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours you and Jesus, what in the world? You're putting yourself in a bad spot. No, 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 no. That's not what the scripture says at all. We are up in the air when fire comes down from God out of heaven. We're with God. John 14, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. We're lifted up into the air. And this is, it's, all, all throughout the Bible. I mean, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, 1 Thessalonians 4. 
For the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We're in the air. The beloved city is New Jerusalem, which is in the air. It's in heaven. It's above. Galatians 4. Jerusalem, which is above, is free and the mother of us all. It's above. It's not a it's, it's not a dirty, stinky place here on earth. It's up above. It's overwhelmingly clear, obvious. And it's just so pathetic, I think. I really do. People don't care about the truth, apparently. But let's take a look at some more things that are goofy. And we're going to start in the New International Version, the NIV, very popular. And of course, you can't be a serious Bible student if you read the NIV. There's no way you can believe it's from God. And all these people, all these NIVers, New King James Version, ESV, NASB, all these people that read these versions, they all believe there's an invisible, magical Bible that the, they get their translation from. They don't believe this is the true Word of God. They believe this old Harry Potter book that doesn't exist is the Word of God, and these are the best translations of this invisible book that doesn't exist. In other words, they don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. Meanwhile, we got the pure Word of God directly from God in the King James Bible. All right. So let's take a gander to this. All right. In the NIV, we notice here it says in verse 4, They had not worshipped a beast nor his image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or in or their hands they came to life and reigned with Christ they came to life and reigned with Christ they were dead now follow me on this just follow me try to keep an open mind because this is ridiculous it, it really is it, it within its own version Think about this. They came to life. The rest of the dead lived not again. Oh, I'm sorry. The rest of the dead did not come to life. They came to life. But the rest of the dead did not come to life. You get it? Till the thousand years were ended. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. Okay. Now, in this scenario, you have people with their heads cut off coming back to life all right they came to life all right follow me on this This is why I call it the zombie doctrine. All right. The souls of those who had been beheaded. All right. People with no heads. That's what that means. They had their heads chopped off. All right. They came to life. All right. For a thousand years. 
the rest of the dead did not come to life. All right? So for a thousand years, you have people with no heads. And then after a thousand years, people with heads come to life. Now, the implication here is that these people with heads, they, came, they come to life and are partakers of the zombies, with the, the headless zombies. All right, blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. All right, that you can't get around this. All right, so the first resurrection, according to the NIV, is the headless zombies. And then there's a second resurrection of people with heads. And they are sharing partakers of the headless zombie resurrection. All right. All right. Anybody seeing this? All right, the second death has no power over them. All right, so let me touch on that a second. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him a thousand years. All right, so let me go back. I feel like if somebody were just to follow me on this, they would be able to see it. All right, so again, headless zombies reign with Christ a thousand years, and then people with heads come to life, and they share in the resurrection. All right, at, they come to life after the thousand years. So for a thousand years, you got headless zombies, and then there's an additional thousand years where you got headless zombies with regular zombies. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and Christ and will reign with him a thousand years. I don't know how people don't see it. Honest to God. In the NIV, you've got a thousand years of headless zombies, and then you got another thousand years of regular zombies mixed with headless zombies. I, you can't get around it. Just from a logical standpoint, you can't get around that. And not in an honest way. All right, so just in case somebody is unsure, let me make this crystal clear. Jesus is the resurrection. You didn't know that? You didn't know Jesus said, I am the resurrection? You can't figure out who the first resurrection is? It's Jesus. You should have known that. Because it's abundantly clear. You know he resurrected. You know he taught, talked a lot about the resurrection. The resurrection is talked about quite a bit. And you didn't know Jesus was the first resurrection. He is the first fruits of them that slept. As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ, that is coming. There's no mention of headless zombies, regular zombies. There's no mention of a thousand years after Christ comes. You won't find that in Revelation 20. You won't find that anywhere. 
Jesus Christ is the first resurrection. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? Jesus is the first resurrection. You should have known that. If you would have believed the Bible that you hold in your hands, you should have known that. Verse 6 in Revelation 20, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Alright, we can go to Exodus 19 and 1 Peter chapter 2 and realize and see that we are a kingdom of priests. We are a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people. All right. We are called to preach the gospel to every creature. We are the priests of God, even in Revelation 1. It states that Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God. We are, right now, priests of God and Christ. Right now, the second death has no power over us. Right now. You didn't know that? Didn't you just see that here in John chapter 11? Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over us that are born of God. Right now. You didn't know that? I don't know how people miss it. I really seriously don't know how people miss it. It's incredible. Let me go back here because uh, Hebrews 10 has a very profound, or excuse me, <laughs> Hebrews 11. Excuse me. Hebrews 11 has a very profound verse here. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith. What are you putting your faith into? What is it that you're hoping for? Are you putting your hope and faith into a bonus thousand years of sexual activity? And if you're being honest with yourself, is that what you're putting your faith into? Because that's what I contend all these false teachers are preaching this idea of a bonus thousand years so that they might can be able to continue to have sex here let's first go to uh, first Peter uh, or excuse me second Peter chapter 3 knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers well we're in the last days this is evidence of it walking after their own lust and saying since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation this is consistent with what they teach that Jesus will come and everything's going to continue as it is now with the exception that they are going to be in their glorified bodies they are going to be as though they were 20 years old or 16 years old or whatever and horny as all can be and they're going to have all the women that they could ever dream of that's what they're putting their hope into is it not obvious? A thousand years of what? Here's another example of another false teacher teaching this idea that they will be having sex for a thousand years. Death for those in natural bodies. It'll be a world where infant mortality is unheard of. All right, you, the, okay, so this is code saying... Infant mortality will be unheard of. Death for those in natural bodies. It'll be a world. It'll be a world where infant mortality will be unheard of. That means 
they'll be having babies. And you know what that means if they're having babies? That means they're having sex. After Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And that this is what it's about. This is what it's all about. This idea of having sex. And these guys are all scoffers. Every single one of them. Knowing this second. Uh, no, knowing this first. Knowing this first. That there shall come in the last days scoffers. Walking after their own lust. Jude. 18. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. That's exactly what do you think this is talking about? Thought it was something else? It's telling us exactly what it's talking about. Telling us exactly what's going on and we see it going on exactly as it said in the Bible first John chapter 2 the world passes away and the lust thereof so there is no more sex Jesus tells us in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the children or I'm sorry but are as the angels in heaven for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage. So there is no more sex. Same thing that John said. The world passes away and the lust thereof. There is no more sex. It's better. It's much better. And the idea... Maybe the idea isn't just the right word to use, but... How sex all started was from the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's how it all started. Because they did that, God made them to have children. And, you know, to, to uh, uh, you, know, be, uh, you know, be fruitful and multiply. Right, to have sexual intercourse. Let's just say it. Okay, uh, that's where it stems from. That's where it comes from. Because they disobeyed God, God put it on them and us to have children. This is coming to an end. Right? It, you read the verse before. The Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So God is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. And this is part of the world. Right? You go back to 1 John chapter 2. Love not the things of this world. Here, let me just in case love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. This world in the stinky sex is going to be done away with forever. There's no way around it. So if you're teaching a doctrine... That has a bonus thousand years of sexual activity. You are exactly who they are talking about in Jude 18 and 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 3. Knowing this first. That there shall come in the last day scoffers. Walking after their own lust. And think about this. 
Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and nothing changes except we're changed some of us or all of us or what what's going on here some of us are changed into our glorified bodies meanwhile the unsaved they aren't changed into glorified bodies but yet they're never gonna die And there's going to be no more sin. So this transition is... It, so when Jesus comes, it's a good thing for the unsaved. It's a, going to be a happy day. Because now, they will never sin. They will not die. For a thousand years. It's a good thing. Problem little bit of a problem I mean a big problem a huge gigantic problem because in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 it says behold he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him in all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so amen when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, all kindreds of the earth shall wail. Well, why would they wail? Well, what are they going to wail in happiness? Because now they're not going to die. They made it to the end and they're not going to die. Isn't that what you're teaching? Jesus comes and there's no more death for a thousand years. It's peace for a thousand years. No more sin. Isn't that what you're teaching? I mean, it's all kinds of goofy. I'm not kidding you. It's all kinds of goofy. And, and people just ain't putting any thought into it and not using their brain at all. Bunch of dough heads. All right, Matthew 24. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. That's Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see Jesus coming in the clouds with, and up, with power and great glory. All of the tribes of the earth will mourn there'll be they'll mourn they'll be wailing Luke 21 same event same moment in time there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon earth distress of the nations with perplexity the seas and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear there's gonna be mourning there's gonna be wailing and men's heart, men are going to be having heart attacks. Why? This is a, this should be a good thing for the unsaved because according to your doctrine, when Jesus comes, there will be no death for a thousand years. Uh, you want to switch that up a little bit and say, well, when Jesus comes, it's the judgment of God. And the unsaved are destroyed. And it's only the saved that live for a thousand years. Alright. Let's go with that. Let's go with that thought. Hey, honest, honestly, I, I have no idea. What these guys are thinking. Alright. So for a thousand years. Let's play along with that idea. So Jesus comes. And there's only saved people living after Jesus returns. So this thousand year reign is only saved people and Jesus ruling from the Middle East. And he's on Fox News and CNN every single day. All right, let's go with that. For a thousand years and there's no sin, just peace, no death for a thousand years. Jesus is over in the Middle East. And then, at the end of the thousand years, fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours the Lord Jesus Christ and all the people over there 
in the Middle East. What are you guys doing? You think you think that's going to happen? You think that's going to be a glorious day for you when God devours the Lord Jesus Christ? Eh, what's going on, man? What are you teaching? Is this not straight from the devil? Huh? Yeah? No? Can you answer that? I don't see. This is why I don't think people put any thought into what they're teaching. And it's concerning to me because I'm not sure people are putting any thought into what they are believing. All right, it, it's quite clear. All right, now we, I was going to go through all, all these. The New King James is not a New King James Bible. You, you should know that. And if you don't, uh, you'll find out one way or the other. It's a trick to get people away from the, the true Word of God, which is the King James Bible. All right. And um, I don't know if there's anything I want to look at in particular here. Other than maybe say, the saints reign with Christ 1,000 years. All right, and notice that it does not say the saints reign a thousand years. It doesn't say Christ reigns a thousand years. All right? Because if they did say that, that would be very obvious that they are liars. All right. ESV. Let's see if they they have the zombie the zombie uh, doctrine as well. Let's see. Let's find out here. And they came to life. There it is. Zombies came to life for a thousand years, and then the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. Alright, so the regular zombies are sharing in the headless zombie resurrection. And then, after a thousand years, they also will reign uh, an additional thousand years. What don't make any sense at all? Did anybody they even just use any common sense, man? Are you not seeing it? Let's go to the NASB. NASB. Uh, one of the co-founders of the NASB can't think of his name right at the top of my head right now, but he condemned his own Bible version. And it goes ignored. And people don't care. He said, I fear I am in trouble with the Lord because they put together the NASB and it is full of errors. And the founder, co-founder said, that he's afraid that he is in trouble with the Lord because of what he had done. And then this thing's out of control. He can't stop it. And people are ignoring his own condemnation of this piece of work that they did, that he's responsible for. All right, so, and uh, right here, they came to life. <laughs> wow. Headless zombies came to, a, came to life for a thousand years, and then regular zombies. Let's see, where are we at here? The rest of the dead not, did not come to life. The other soon-to-be zombies don't come to life until after the thousand years. And they are partakers of the zombie resurrection, the headless zombie resurrection, 
And then they, the regular zombies, will reign for a thousand years. It's so, I mean, you, this is just comic book stuff. Really, it, it's all, it's delusional because you're ignoring the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. All these people that teach us stuff, they completely ignore what Jesus has done. Are you going to follow these headless zombies? Or are you going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ who has led the way for us? God was manifest in the flesh. He came into our temple, into our body, and he destroyed this temple, and he rebuilt a perfect temple right he laid down his life he destroyed this temple and then he took it back up and he rebuilt the temple and then ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us he has led the way for us you notice in the Old Testament when Abraham was he was gonna offer his own son but no 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 that he had great faith he showed great faith, but he didn't offer his son. God offered his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He has led the way for us. He has come into our body, and he has done all the works necessary for salvation. All the works necessary for eternal life. He's done it all. It's like the shepherd has done everything for his sheep. All the sheep have to do is follow him. That's it. He's led the way. He's led the way for us. So this idea. That these headless zombies. Are leading the way. F for you. Because. According to these corrupt Bible versions. They are the first resurrection. And then, what, you're going to put yourself in with the the second set of zombies? The ones with their heads? So now you're going to follow the headless zombies? Because they led the way first. And then a thousand years later, you're, you're going to follow them? I mean, is anybody putting any thought into this? It's incredible. It really is. You can't get around the ridiculousness.